I combined mobs in Minecraft to make brand new mobs. Let's take this pillager and this cow and remake them into a minotaur. Just gonna borrow your head for a minute, buddy. Give this guy the buffest body around. Look at the size of those arms. Some giant horns on top of that bull head. Even minotaurs still need clothes. Some hooved feet for stomping around and he's ready to go. We have got our two-legged minotaur with some massive beefy horns. All known evidence shows that a minotaur is good for smashing things. Let me just see if this minotaur is capable of smashing things that are alive. Oh yes, it looks like he's te Oh my goodness. Oh, very much so can smash. Oh, but he can't jump because he's under the tree. Can he survive though? Oh my goodness. Uh, I definitely didn't make him strong enough. Those husks just killed our minotaur. We're gonna need to combine something else that can take care of these guys. Combining this blaze and this chicken will make us a phoenix. Just gonna take this beak here, move a few of these bits, take this wing here. We'll keep the blaze head and make it the phoenix's head with a new beak. Add on a body with some big flame colored feathers, some feet, super big, super bright, and ready to take flight. Let's plop this phoenix down underneath this delicious looking tree. Now that is one flaming bird. That wingspan looks immaculate though. I'm very tempted to go and pet it. More importantly, we need to take care of these guys that took down our minotaur. Oh, our phoenix is actually getting one step ahead of us, flying over the top and blasting fireballs down beneath. I have a feeling this husk is about to go sayonara. Ooh, there it goes. What if we bring in something a little bit stronger? Oh, there they go. They're firing back up at the Phoenix. They're all taking damage, though, standing right below. The crossbows are landing onto our Phoenix, though. Down goes quite a few of those piglins, though. Just one guy left with the crossbow, and yikes, down he goes as well. This Phoenix is a beefy bird. Cross a horse with a dolphin, and we get a hippopotamus. Let's see. Dolphin head plus horse mouth. No need for that neck. That dolphin body will be better for water, but we need those strong horse legs. A jaw fit for crushing watermelons with ease. A little recolor. And cover it in mud, of course. Some toes. Some teeth. Look at this fabulous water horse. Now, these guys love the water, so let's get over here and place down our cute hippopotamus. Don't you just want to go and give him a hug? I did say these guys are good for squishing melons, though. Oh, and he loves it. He's having a blast. Oh, my goodness gracious. He's the melon connoisseur. Ooh, that is one happy hippo. He's literally floating in happiness. The one thing this hippo's missing is some good solid friendship, though. That's better. Oh, he looks angry. Why does he look angry? Oh, what was that? Oh, my goodness. No, my cow. What are you doing? No, not another cow. This hippo is hostile. No wonder they're always alone at the zoo. Let's combine an enderman and a creeper to make a black hole. We'll switch out these heads, and instead of a body, we'll make a big swirl of blocks into a black hole in its center. A few creeper blocks for a splash of color. I don't think getting near this guy is a very good idea. I'm gonna need some open space because we could be delving into some dangerous, dangerous airport. A literal black hole in hand. Ooh. They say light travels around black holes and whatnot, so I've reversed the essence of gravitational theory and been able to do the light contractions and detractions to make sure we can actually see what's going on here. Now as our black hole enters the galaxy, we can see it begin consuming things and growing and growing. And if mobs get nearby the black hole, they will keep getting sucked into it. Look at all of those husks getting sucked in. If any astronaut ever lands on some foreign planet and all they see is leftover meat, then we'll know what happened. If we take this phantom and add a salmon, we can make a manta ray. These wings will need a little shaping to look right. Replace the phantom head. We need some fish DNA instead. Two fish heads can make the mouth shape. Now let's get those colors right. A little bit of a wavy pattern. Look at those eyes. And perfect that pointy tail to finish. Find ourselves some peace and quiet over here near the water. And our manta ray has disappeared. Our manta ray has joined us. We can build our very own aquarium with this cute fella. I'll name you... Georgina. Here's some friends, Georgina. And we'll bring in some tropical fish to make it a fully equipped aquarium. This has got to be my most peaceful experiment ever. Let's spice it up a bit by bringing in some drown. Oh my goodness gracious. 
Oh, the manta ray are communicating and they're attacking the same mobs. Look at all of them going after that drowned and then that drowned and then that drowned. Oh my goodness, this is not the aquarium you want to get stuck in, that's for sure. Those are some very, very protective manta rays. Let's combine this pillager and a horse to make a centaur. No need for those legs, buddy. You're gonna be a horse. Slide on over that horse body to our pillager. We'll take the horse mane and give this guy a cool mohawk, plus some rocking abs. Then we'll give him a bow and arrow as the perfect weapon for this new centaur. And that my friends, is a real centaur. Let's get that bow to good use, though. Bam, 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 Our centaur is actually firing off multiple arrows at once. Unfortunately, a lot of them are missing. There's hardly any arrows landing on any husks at all. Aren't you centaurs supposed to have a bunch of history with bows and running and things like that? Oh, and... Now you're gone. Okay, let's just say that did not go as expected. I had just a tad bit more hope for that guy. One part undead zombie, one part bat equals a vampire. Let's give this zombie some wings. Add a pair of pointy ears with his super pale complexion. Every vampire needs a wicked set of fangs, a slick hairdo, some fancy duds. He's so cool, it's scary. We absolutely need a haunted castle for our vampire. There he is. Oh. He actually looks a little small. It looks like he's probably removed everybody that used to live here. Let's see what happens if somebody tries to move in, like this guy. Oh my goodness, oh, he's getting near the organ. Don't let him get near the organ. He sucked his blood. He sucked his blood right out. He's gonna suck his blood again. That's four times. Stay away from the organ. Oh, yikes. I'm gonna get out before he tries to suck my blood too. We've got a vampire, so let's combine a villager and a wolf to make a werewolf. I'll just need your head, Mr. Wolf. Put it on the villager here. We can combine their torsos to make this werewolf extra strong. Look at the muscles on these arms. Now stretch out that muzzle and add some impressive chompers and a pair of shorts since he's technically still human too. By all known accounts, this werewolf should exactly resemble a villager. We'll see if this werewolf can mesh with all the other townsfolk. So far, it looks like he's communicating just fine. And at first glance, there's no way to tell that anything is wrong with our werewolf here. Of course that is, unless I provoke him. Yep, there he is, his true form. And now that he's been exposed, he's going right for the villager. And he's turned the villager into another werewolf. There's four werewolves now taking over this village. There's a whole horde of werewolves. And these guys are hungry. We gotta let them feed. Those claws look so sharp. That werewolf got insanely big, insanely fast. This goat and this ocelot can be combined to make the mythical beast, the chimera. We'll need both their heads, but this ocelot needs to be a lion. Make it way bigger and give it a mane before making it more lioness. Then we'll combine these two split down the middle, one half lion, one half goat. And a chimera has one more part to combine a snake for a tail. Let's add that long serpentine body and top it off with a snake head ready to strike. We've still got some fire burning from our phoenix, but that's okay. We've got our multi-headed chimera. The tiny little head compared to that massive mane and those goatly horns. Our chimera can assume any form that it wishes. It's gonna go after this piglin. It notices the piglin, it prepares and charges as the goat. Multiple piglins here, another charge comes in and knocks that piglin into the air. Our chimera is being cornered, backing away, and lets loose a lion roar to do damage to every piglin in sight. Another roar, another charge, and the snake is dealing poison damage over time to every piglin they go after. This chimera just knocked all of those piglins with ease. This could be the strongest combination so far. Let's combine this iron golem with a blaze to make a furnace bot. Pluck off some blaze rods for its head. Make those eyes super big. Now we'll turn the torso into a giant furnace. Add a few pipes for smoke and fuel. A sensor on the chest to tell us everything is running smoothly. Some short little legs to get him around. This bot is ready ready to get to work. One massive mine shaft. Head all the way down. And this is where our furnace bot belongs. Let me go grab a little bit of this and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Now do my bidding. Ready to go. There it is. No, it's not. There it is. There it is. There it is. Burn! 
Smelled my iron! This is smelled raw iron. Uh, our furnace bot is one step ahead. It, it, I need to get the iron ore, and then it turns the iron ore into raw iron. Unfortunately, the heavy lifting I'm gonna have to do all on my own. Maybe he's good for defending us, though? Super beefy, super stiff, super flaming, can burn up anything that dares to come nearby. Except raw iron, of course. Now I want to take a zombie, a drowned, a husk, a skeleton, a wither, and see what happens when we combine them all. I want to use all their heads. We'll use the skeleton's torso for the main body with some massive ribs to support all the weight of those heads. Then we'll grab four different arms from the husk, drowned, zombied, and withered. Those iconic zombie jeans will be torn for the hips and legs stolen from all the undead mobs to move this massive monster six legs and a proper grave arena is what we need for this big massive combo ultra mega undead monster this guy is huge we do have all of our other guys here we're gonna see if these guys can come out on top against that which i highly doubt they're trying though so far they've got him backed up but boom are falling from the sky. Everybody's taking damage, but they have got him down about 10% out so far. Oh no, we've lost nearly everybody already though. In the heat of battle, our Camaro falls down in the back and this ultra mega undead monster is just summoning hordes of hostile mobs behind. Good thing our Phoenix is able to stay out of danger so far. Those falling bones from the sky though are doing a lot of damage. This is not looking good. Maybe a third health gone and this ultra mega undead monster. Our centaur is getting absolutely pummeled back here and down goes the centaur too. This is looking incredibly grim, folks. We've got our phoenix against that. We can give him some credit, but there's not much left. The mobs are being summoned faster than our phoenix can take them out. They've all ganged up on the phoenix and he has to land. His wings are tired. Our poor phoenix. Our ultra mega undead boss is just taunting back here. No! Down goes our final hope! Ultra Mega Undead Monster is the beefiest of all and lives to prove it. Despite taking everybody else down, I'd consider this my best creation ever.